Thank you for joining us here today. Merci d'être ici avec nous aujourd'hui. My name is Susie Grenell, and I'm the President and CEO of the Hotel Association of Canada. I'm pleased to be here today with my colleagues from the travel and tourism industry. As you all know, the travel, tourism, and hospitality sectors were the hardest hit during the pandemic. Necessary public health restrictions shuttered many of our businesses, most of whom barely made it to the other side. We did our part to keep Canadians safe, and now it is finally our turn to recover. Travel is back with a vengeance, and we could not be happier. But the passenger experience at our Canadian airports is a challenge. We have lengthy delays on the tarmac. We have hours of lineups at customs. We're asking people to complete duplicative health checks. We still have random arrivals testing that is compounding the delays and frustrating passengers. At issue today is the fact that travel volumes are increasing, but COVID restrictions and requirements continue to linger. And that is creating congestion at our airports and contributing to a poor impression of Canada and our international travelers. This hurts our tourism industry at a time when we are desperately trying to recover. It adds uncertainty, frustration, and anxiety to the traveler experience. And it hurts our local tourism operators and hotels who are losing bookings because people are choosing other, less congested options. Many other countries like Italy, the UK, Switzerland have fully opened up travel and are fiercely competitive destinations. We believe that Canada should follow suit. So as we gear up for what we hope will be an incredibly busy summer, we are calling on the government today to alleviate the pain points and remove unnecessary restrictions. À l'aube de l'été, nous demandons au gouvernement fédéral de supprimer les restrictions inutiles. We must move away from emergency measures that were necessary at the height of the pandemic towards a more measured and modern system. We are pleased that the government is increasing staffing and remove mandatory uh, testing requirements for travelers in transit, but we need to go further and faster. We can emerge from COVID with a vibrant and thriving travel and tourism sector, and we can fix these delays, and we can do it in time for the summer rush, but we need action today. With that, I'll hand it over to Interim President and CEO of the Canadian Airports Council, Manette Pasher. Merci. Thank you, Susie. And thank you to the Canadian Travel and Tourism Roundtable for bringing us together today. Canada's hub airports have consistently been ranked among the best in the world for customer satisfaction and efficiency, including throughout the pandemic. Our airports know how to serve passengers to the highest levels, but we need government to act urgently to remove the remaining public health requirements at the border by June 15th in order to alleviate the pressures currently facing travelers at Canada's airports. We are pleased the, the federal government has worked with our federal agencies to increase the number of CATSA and CBSA screening officers, and also to eliminate random testing for transiting passengers. These were encouraging steps forward coming out of the working groups composed of senior industry and government representatives. But there is still more work to do, and it's urgent. The summer travel season is upon us, and international traffic at our arrivals at our airports is projected to increase by 50% at hub airports this summer. We need to move quickly to resolve issues and smooth out the travel experience on arrival into our country. We are urging the federal government to take three concrete actions in the short term to immediately alleviate pressure on the system. They include removing on-site mandatory random testing from Canada's airports, removing Public Health Agency of Canada's duplicate health check questions at government custom checkpoints at the international border, and removing vaccination mandates for CATSA and CBSA workers. There is a lot of pent up demand for travel. We are seeing it. In May, our hub airports were seeing 70% of pre-pandemic passenger traffic levels. 
Canada's four hub airports are currently processing on average of 56,000 international passengers a day, and that's forecasted to grow by 80,000 a day this summer. It is challenging to manage that level of traffic with leftover legacy public health protocol protocols still in place at our international borders. It would normally take a customs agent about 30 seconds to process a passenger at their desk, and now it is taking two to four times that because of these public health protocols. Normal travel levels cannot coexist with current public health protocols in place within our airport facilities. We need to do all we can to facilitate smooth travel in our country, and that requires the removal of these public health restrictions. I'd now like to turn it over to my colleague Suzanne at the National Airlines Council of Canada. Good morning. I'm Suzanne acton gervain I'm Interim President and CEO of the National Airlines Council of Canada. Since the onset of the pandemic, Canada's major airlines have been committed to protecting employee and passenger health and have continued to invest heavily in the safe restart of travel and tourism in order to drive our national recovery in every region of, our, of our, the country. While the road to recovery has not been easy, we know it can and will improve, and we are seeing progress already. While the numbers are still short of pre-COVID times, more people are traveling now compared to since the onset of the pandemic in 2020. Canadians are eager to return to travel as are international visitors looking to come to Canada for business or to discover our beautiful nation, and this is a good sign. But part of welcoming travelers back is ensuring that their experience is predictable, timely, and enjoyable, with clear service standards and performance metrics similar to other nations. Canada is in a post-pandemic environment, which includes high levels of vaccination, as well as high levels of prior infection. That is why the National Airlines Council of Canada will continue to advocate for clear direction on evidence-based health protocols and a plan our industry can work towards, a plan and a path for the continued operation of our industry that recognize what we have learned from the pandemic and the government responses must be predictable. Aviation is global. And therefore, by extension, so is the travel and tourism industry, and Canada needs to align with the international community. It is time for the Government of Canada to revisit COVID-19 pandemic restrictions placed on air travel, in line with the growing list of over 50 countries that have removed barriers to travel altogether. It is time for the Government of Canada to revisit COVID-19 uh, pandemic restrictions for the, and the continuation of legacy pandemic era public health restrictions, many of which exclusively remain in place just for air travel, as it will continue to create bottlenecks for travelers. The government also needs to require that their agencies meet the intended levels of service, which cite service excellence and performance benchmarks. As demand for travel returns and the global economies reopen, Canada's border policies need to reflect the new reality. If not, Canada risks being a country left behind. We urge the government to listen to those who know the reality on the ground and bring forward changes rapidly. The measures identified by colleagues here today will have tremendous impact and take us where we need to go in time for the summer travel season. While we welcome the steps taken so far, we need relief in the short term. This is not just about our businesses, it is about the traveler experience. We are eager to work with the Government of Canada to restore a seamless, predictable and enjoyable experience for travelers. Thank you. I would like to now turn it over to Patrick Doyle, Vice President and General Manager at American Express Global Business Travel. Thank you. The travel and tourism industry has only just begun the long road, long road to recovery after two years of uncertainty. Health restrictions first implemented at the beginning of the pandemic are contributing to loss and post postponement of business travel, conferences, and events across the country, which potentially has a long-term impact. Just as our sector is starting to get back on, on its feet, the last thing we need is another setback. The situation we are all witnessing at Pearson, our nation's largest airport, is troubling. We should be welcoming the surge of air traffic into Canada. Families vacationing, business travelers entering the country to ink new deals. This is good news for our country. Pearson is, for many travelers, the first impression they get of Canada. But with these long delays, we are sending the wrong message. 
We are telling them Canada is not open for business. We are telling them that Canada cannot create a seamless, stress-free travel experience. These impressions can leave a lasting impact. Our reputation is at stake. This is why I'm pleased to be here, surrounded by colleagues with similar concerns. The federal government must act immediately to remove obsolete pandemic provisions and ensure the airport has access to adequate resources to process the large influx of travelers coming to Canada. It's time for the travel and tourism to be treated the exact same way as every other industry in the country, open and back for business. These changes must be implemented now. On the eve of the summer season, we cannot wait any longer. While the steps taken by the federal government are encouraging, it's simply not enough. Strong, swift, decisive action must be taken now before it's too late. We will now turn it over to questions and Monette will moderate. We'll start with questions here on the floor. So if anybody here would like to ask a question, please feel free. And then we'll move to questions on the teleconference line. Uh, une question pour Suzy. Um, are the, the, the person who can just give me a little statement in French? Sure. Uh, J'aimerais simplement que, que vous nous rappelez vos trois demandes qui sont assez claires, que vous avez formulées, mais en français. Tu pourrais me donner? Oui, absolument. Je vais vous les donner tout de suite. Alors, en fait, nous euh, demandons au gouvernement fédéral du Canada de prendre trois actions euh, immédiates qui pourraient alléviers euh, les pressions euh, sur le système. Alors, ce serait pour euh, enlever le qu'est-ce qu'on on, on a euh, dans les aéroports, c'est le, 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 le testing euh, à, à arrivant aux aéroports. Ainsi, nous demandons au, euh, à l'agence de, de santé publique de enlever les tout ce qui est, euh, comme les, les questions concernant la santé, tout ce qui est les mesures qui sont euh, doublées, enfin, dans le moment aussi. Et ainsi, nous demandons d'enlever de les vaccinations, les mandats de vaccination pour euh, le CATSA et l'Agence euh, frontalière. Et je comprends qu'il faut, faut que ça se fasse rapidement, c'est votre demande? Effectivement. Nous demandons que ça se fasse assez rapidement. Comme a dit M. Patrick Doyle, nous sommes à l'aube de la saison de voyage du ici au Canada. Alors, euh, effectivement, il faudrait que ça soit sous... Euh... Et qu'est-ce que vous craignez? C'est que, que les gens boudent le Canada? Que les gens n'y ne, ne, viennent pas? Que la saison euh, tombe à l'eau? Euh, effectivement, ça c'est une des concernes que nous avons. Mais en fait, c'est la réputation du Canada. Et puis, comme j'ai dit, l'aviation est globale. Nous ne voulons pas que, le, que notre industrie de l'aviation ainsi que le tourisme en général soit mis à un avantage compétitif, pas en ligne avec les autres pays au monde. Et puis, une petite dernière, le, le ministre du Tourisme, tout comme le premier ministre, vient tout juste de, de dire à l'entrée de, de, de la réunion du cabinet, la santé va passer avant euh, le tourisme. Est-ce que vous sentez que vous avez une écoute actuellement de la part du gouvernement libéral? Nous sommes toujours à l'écoute euh, et prêts à travailler et collaborer avec le gouvernement fédéral. Euh, nous réalisons que nous ne sommes pas des experts en santé publique, mais nous sommes des experts en aviation et dans le, euh, le, le domaine du voyage et du tourisme. Et qu'est-ce que nous voyons ici au Canada, c'est que le domaine du voyage est la seule industrie qui euh, est sujet, continue à être sujet à ces, euh, ces restrictions. Et ainsi, nous voyons d'autres pays globalement qui font de l'avant. Merci beaucoup. Merci à vous. Hi there, I'm Annie with CTV National News. Um, I'm hoping you can talk about what the impediment is to these regulations. You're saying that you want the regulations for vaccination removed, the testing. Is it that you are finding people aren't coming to Canada because they're unvaccinated and don't want to quarantine? Uh, is it that it's causing more delays because there are not enough staff because they may not be vaccinated? What specifically is the impediment that you're seeing because of the travel restrictions? Yeah, sure. It, this is really about facilitating the smooth travel process. So this is backing up arrivals at our border. 
You're, th you're talking about, you know, if you just take the example of Pearson, 30,000 people coming through per day through our international arrivals into our facility. And it would normally take a customs agent 30 seconds to process that passenger when they're at their desk. It's, you know, it should take an international standard would be about 20 minutes to get through the line. And we're seeing much longer lines. We're seeing people backed up waiting on planes anywhere from 30 up to 75 minutes at peak times. So this is just unacceptable in terms of entry into Canada. And the reason is, is because each person has to be vetted in terms of health questions that are asked multiple times, both in the ArriveCan app, also at the machine, by the customs agent at the desk. And then we need to decide, or the government agency needs to decide who is going to be randomly selected for testing. 4,000 people a day are randomly selected for testing, but we need to vet all 30,000 of those passengers into Pearson, 50,000 into our country. It's slowing down the process in terms of smooth arrivals into our country. Our airports were not built to facilitate public health requirements. They were built for the smooth, you know, transiting of passengers welcoming welcome them into our country. So this is really what's backing up the system at our international arrivals. And I guess my follow-up is, how much of the change is on the airlines themselves or on the different agencies? Because staffing is a huge problem. If there were more staff, more CATSA agents, more flights that the airlines were putting on, you could space people out when they arrive and give them more time, or you could run through it faster. But staffing, from the airlines perspective, from CATSA, from border agents, that seems to be a major barrier. And that's what the transport minister has highlighted as sort of the bigger problem more so than the restrictions. Yeah, so that's a pre-departure coming, you know, when you're traveling and you're leaving the country. What we're talking about today is arriving into our country. And that is customs officers, the federal agency, CBSA, is responsible for that within our airports. We were able to facilitate smooth travel pre-pandemic. We will be able to again if we didn't have these public health measures in place. Is there a staffing issue across you know, aviation in general? Absolutely. We're all facing that shortage and working hard with our federal government agencies, our airline partners, our airports. We're all working hard to get people staffed up and, and back to work as quickly as possible as possible. So I think we're making efforts there. But even if we solved the staffing issue, we still have these public health requirements in place that are really limiting the smooth travel process at our international border. And that's what we're calling today to change. Hi, it's uh, Tom Perry with CBC. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, in terms of uh, right now, I don't even know if you can get a flight from Europe to Ottawa. You've got to go through Pearson. And I'm wondering if that routing issue is is you know making this, uh, the situation at Pearson worse H how do you deal with that well we're back to I'm you know in terms of air traffic we're back to about 70 percent so we're not back to normal so some of our flights at airports across the country ha are just beginning to return in terms of international traffic but we should be able to facilitate the volumes that we have right now we're only at 70 percent so it really is coming back to these public health requirements for international travel at our border it isn't necessarily about you know ottawa doesn't have their flight back so that's all going back into pearson um, we should be able to um, facilitate the level of traffic that we have and smoothly um, process passengers. And do you see any public health reason for maintaining um, the, the restrictions as they are? I guess I would just say that we are an outlier in Canada right now. Um, there's 50 countries around the world that have reopened and, and some countries like Australia and New Zealand that have been um, very reserved in their public health requirements. And um, I think we need to look at that as Canada and say, where do we fit? We need to reopen our economy. We, you know, this industry has been through a lot the past two years. We're coming into our third summer. We want to be able to welcome people to our country. We do not want them sitting on a tarmac for any amount of time. We want them to, you know, come to Canada. We need tourism back in our economy throughout the country and we need to move forward. And yeah, we want to get the, the pandemic ended as well. So I'm just wondering, do you see any, any reason to maintain any level of, of restrictions at this point? You know, the restrictions that are in place right now are surveillance testing within our airports. There are, I, I'm not aware of any other countries that are doing testing within airports around the world. 
Um, I would say, you know, can this be done at the community level? If we want to still do surveillance for variants, can that happen outside of the airport environment? Thank you. Thanks. Are there any more questions in the room? Okay, with that, we'll go to the operator. Sure, first question comes from Laura Oman with the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Good morning, thanks for taking our question. Um, I wanted to ask you first, I, I'm sorry I missed your reference to June 15th, but it sounded to me like you were giving the government a deadline and I'm wondering uh, what the significance of that date is and what you think would happen if the government doesn't make changes uh, by that date because they've already said that the public health measures are gonna remain in place until June 30th. Thank you for the question. Every day matters. We need to save our summer and we need to be able to facilitate smooth travel into our country in order to, you know, impact jobs and have people move throughout our country for the tourism summer uh, tourism season this summer. So we're saying June 15th really every day matters. This is an urgent issue. Okay, thank you. Um, I also wanted to revisit uh, my colleague Annie's question to you, specifically as it relates to the agents and the vaccine mandates. Are you seeing this as a serious issue that they're not able to bring in staff, for example, because people aren't vaccinated? What is the reason for that recommendation? Yeah, so they're federal government agencies, so they're not able to come back to work if they're unvaccinated. We've seen other sectors be able to bring back workers um, where there are needs, and we're saying that there is a substantial need here. So we have, you know, CATSA employees that are not able to come back to work that are trained and could be quickly come back, um, also CBSA agents. So we think that would be a immediate step the government could take to help alleviate some of the pressure and get people back to work faster. Do you have a sense of how big that problem is? How many agents, for example, have been put off work? I don't have a... I don't have a specific number. I mean, we know generally um, across the country, there's about 10% of people who are unvaccinated. I don't have a specific number for CATS and CBSA, but it would be great to ask them that. Thank you. No more questions at the phone line. Great, thank you. That concludes our press conference. If any of the media in the room want to do one-on-ones, we'd be happy to do so.